the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Apostle Joshua Selman. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very quickly we'll be seated, but just, just afford me a minute or two to honestly celebrate and honor your pastor, Reverend Akila and his dear wife. Let's honor them. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I also want to bless the Lord for the leaders in this church. Thank you for the protocol. Very gracious reception. I'm grateful. Amen and amen. How many of us are ready for tonight? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hold hands with someone and let's just pray everywhere at the overflow inside. We're here to receive the word of God that is able to make us wise. Open up your mouth and cry to the Lord. Father, change me. Open my eyes. Let the light of your presence grant me access to new levels of spiritual possibilities. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is part of the meeting, it's part of the service. Cry your heart to the Lord. Grant us access to light. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your home. Presented here to a new dimension. Lord, we vow that forever you will be glorified. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'm not doing something wrong, am I? Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. Again, it truly is my joy not only to be um, here at House on the Rock and not only to be here in the city of Jos, but I'm glad to be back home. Hallelujah. This is home. It remains forever home. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. Let me please encourage everyone to just lend your destiny, your attention. Because the Bible declares that the entrance of thy word giveth light and even understanding to the simple. The word of God in itself cannot change you. It is the word of God that is understood, that is received, and is engaged, that can transform. Satan has the ability to carry the word and he's not affected by it. In the parable of Jesus, he said, the seed is the word. And in one soil, Satan came by himself to carry the word, yet the word had no effect on him. So it is possible that under certain circumstances, the word of God can be of non-effect. And one of the ways that the word of God can become of non-effect is when you engage it with the traditions of men. The Bible says how that by the traditions of men, it is possible that as potent as the word of God is, it is made of non-effect. There is a requirement when the word of God is about to be dispensed. Please listen. And the Bible says that we receive with meekness. Everybody say meekness. When Moses had an encounter with God, the encounter of the burning bush, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 3 that Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. The bush that was on fire but not consumed. And then when God saw that Moses had turned aside, he drew nigh and the first assignment was take off your shoes. Your shoe is a symbol of your experience and your preconceived ideas about God. You must understand that Moses was a man who was coming from Egypt. Egypt was a place of education and intelligence. There was no ignorance in Egypt. It was the center of witchcraft, the center of intelligence. And until that time, Moses was being prepared to be the next pharaoh. His half-brother, Ramesses, would later become the pharaoh of Egypt. So Moses was not a, an ignorant man. His living to the wilderness was an account of his destiny. And here he stands before this burning bush, thinking the one about to speak to him was one of the many gods in Egypt. So he wanted to add him to the list of the gods. And he says, not so, Moses, take off your shoes. I want to show you a dimension and you are not to add it to what you already know. There are moments in your life where what you receive is not what you add to what you already have. It is a total transformation. And that's why the Bible says it will require meekness to receive. Why meekness? Because you already have results. And that becomes the enemy of the next dimension. Failure never produces failure. Failure is the mother that gives birth to success. It is success that kills success. The same way a man's enemy becomes the brother in his own household. Your last success can fight your next success. It can impart in you a spirit of pride and complacency so that you do not see the need to receive. You might sit down hoping to just get one or two things. Amazing. Not when he's here. If I break protocol, please forgive me. But let's honor Reverend Tende 
great man of God in Zaria too. I just spotted him. Blessings to you, sir. I apologize for any breach of protocol. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So when we come before God, it is important that we understand that he is God and that the entrance of his word, not the reading of it, is what gives light. The scribes had been reading the word for a long time, but it says, ye err not knowing the scriptures. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2. Will it be projected? Okay, so 9 verse 2. We establish a few things tonight and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's at my back, so let me know when it's there. Okay, I'll just read from my Bible. Isaiah chapter 9. Thank you very much. Can we read together? One, two, read. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them. The people that sat in darkness, they were not even aware that they were in darkness. Because anyone in darkness should not sit down. But that they were seated in darkness is a revelation of the extent of the depravity of light. Are we together? I would have been comfortable if he said the people who were in darkness in search for light. But the Bible says they sat down. Sitting is a sign of rest. They were resting in a dimension of living called darkness. And the Bible says, please keep the scripture, that the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. And then he says, they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, a great light had shined upon them. I have a lot to say. Wherever we stop tonight, God will help us in Jesus' name. I, this, this series that I'll be teaching is personal to me because I have always looked for an opportunity to also invest that which the Lord has so graciously granted unto me in just and in this state. The reason is because in as much as we are sent to the ends of the earth, we, God allows us to still have our biases to honor the regions from whence we came. So for me, I am excited sharing what I'm sharing because number one, I believe it. And number two, I understand the power that is resident within it. You see, let me tell you this. When the word of God is accurately explained and it is received with faith, it can work wonders in the life of the recipient. Are we together now? The power of God is deposited in his word and it is released through understanding. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. So let's start from somewhere. Second Timothy chapter 3. We'll read from verse 15 to 17. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Second Timothy and chapter 3. We'll read from verse 15 to 17 God is granting us spiritual enlightenment let's read together one to read and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ the Bible tells us that scripture among the many things that it provides is wisdom that the wisdom of God an insight into his methodology, his modus operandi, his system of operation is hidden in scripture. So that when a man studies scripture by the illumination of the spirit, you are able to access wisdom that as from a holy child. Are we together now? He says that thou hast known the holy scripture as from a child and that that word is able to make you wise able to make you wise able to make you wise are we together colossians chapter 1 please we'll read from verse 9 and 10 i'm walking these scriptures to give us a foundation so that we get, we begin to build 
Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9. It says, For this cause, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. So Paul is praying for the church in Colossae. And I want us to peep into the content of Paul's prayer. This is an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ who so desired the establishment of the church. And so the Bible says that, and to desire that ye be filled with three things. Number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, in all wisdom. And number three, spiritual understanding so Paul is very exact in his desire that these are the boundaries of the spiritual requirements that can cause a man a church a territory to be established capacity to be filled with the knowledge of his will and then wisdom and then spiritual understanding hallelujah The kingdom and this life that we have been called into, please listen, is a compendium of infinite possibilities. This is the first thing I want to establish. Please listen. That in the dealing of God with men, there are no limits to the level and the extent to which men can experience the possibilities of God. The only limitation is God's ability himself. Number two, God's benevolence and his desire to let all of him find expression in man is something that he has so lavishly presented all through scripture. And so we are not in darkness as to the fact that it is God's desire. Are we still together now? He says in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. He says they are thoughts of peace shalom to give you a future and an expected end ephesians chapter one please the third verse the bible says that um, thanks be to god it says which hath blessed us with all spiritual blessing everybody say all spiritual blessing blessed be the god and the father of our lord jesus christ who hath blessed us with how many all spiritual blessings but the bible says that they reside in the heavenly place and in christ very important statement please just follow my progression i need to establish this properly the name in christ or the expression in christ is important because the bible tells us that there is a there is a centralized system of routing every spiritual possibility to the saints and he says it is in christ there are many other strategies you can employ such as wizardry and witchcraft but the Christ said about himself I am the door a thief can enter through a window he still entered but the authorized access point is the door so understand what the, the apostle is teaching here please I need it to be established in understanding this is why I'm taking this Paul is saying we are not in doubt that the saints have been given spiritual blessings but then he tells us that they reside in the heavenlies and they are only routed through the office of the Christ that means in this kingdom your encounter with the office of the Christ becomes the foundation for your experience in this kingdom Apostle John was teaching and this is what he says that this is the record he uses the word testament that God had given us eternal life. Follow me please. He says, and this life is in the Son. Because there are different kinds of life. Are we together now? And so he was not speaking to an ignorant people. But he says there is a kind and a quality of life. And he says this one is resident in the Son. That you only receive that life by receiving the Son. He that hath the Son hath that life. And I've said it again and again, and I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but the expression eternal life there was not a very accurate expression. 
because everybody has eternal life the condition for eternal life is not salvation is to be born by a woman when you evangelize you don't tell people will they spend eternity the question is location not the possibility everybody will spend eternity please listen our job <laughs> i hope you are following what i'm teaching now now you need to understand that the old testament was largely written in hebrew are we together and then the greek was written in a combination of the new testament in greek and aramaic and these words are very deep in context that means that you can find one word that means a lot of things the greek word en n means at for with by two so the translators would have to capture the best linguistic expression that they think conveys the thoughts of the communicator and so here and there we can find their imperfections and imbalances this is why we must study scripture in submission to the wisdom of the holy spirit are you getting what i'm saying now so this is one of such places the word there is zoe as you know zoe is not just eternal life in terms of life without ending no it's a quality of life it's, it's, it's a contrast of life like like the sun and the moon the bible says even among the stars one excelleth in glory so when you talk about the zoe life you are talking about the glory that emanates from such a life and the possibilities that are encapsulated when a man encounters that life and john says this is the record that god you see that he is testifying of the benevolence of the father expressed through the christ the christ gives expression to the heart we know the motif of the father when we look at the christ are we together now this may look like they are basics but it's important for us you need to know this to understand the things i'm about to explain so number one that we have been given all spiritual blessings and number two that the saints can only access any and every true spiritual blessing through the office of the christ jesus a name was given to him you know and with that name was a verdict that all creation would bow philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 5 to 10 the bible says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus and then he begins to tell us all that happened his entire passion and then he says wherefore on account of his allowing himself although god to come and die and even the death on the cross he says god had so highly exalted him david saw this when he says the lord said to my lord that was his coronation service are we together now so he says god had so highly exalted him and given him a name a name is an office it's an identity he says that that name is above every other name and that at the mention of that name every knee must bow and every tongue will confess of things in the heavens the earth and under the earth that Jesus is Lord. The name is not Jesus. Jesus was the name Joseph and Mary gave him as recommended by the angel. The name is Lord. L-O-R-D. Absolute owner. Incontestable master. You find that in Psalm 24. That the earth is the Lord's. So whoever has that title on legal grounds does not only own the earth but everything the earth is the lord and its fullness so the earth has many things its fullness thereof then it says the walls the cosmos the system and all they that dwell therein are we okay so far let me know that i'm with you so that god i'm trying to establish from scripture the benevolence of God and his, his, his desire to see the saints walk in the fullness of the blessings that have been apportioned. One more scripture and then we'll come down to the context of the night. Second Peter, please, chapter 2. Grace and peace, he starts by saying, grace and peace 
be multiplied to you grace and peace Ephesians chapter okay second Peter I meant to say chapter 1 and verse 2 can we find it second Peter chapter 1 I want you to read it I want you to follow it very carefully second Peter chapter 1 are we there let's read together we're reading to verse 4 want to read grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord three stop please please stop stop don't rush when you read scripture don't don't rush at all because there is more there the first thing I want you to know and will make use of this revelation in the latter part of this teaching is that all things that are given to us are according as his divine power his divine power is the force responsible for making anything manifest his divine power listen listen his divine power according as his divine power hath given unto us how many things please everybody say all things it says all things that pertain unto life and godliness is it alright if I use two people to make an illustration? Let me have two gentlemen, any gentlemen, please. Don't be offended. Any two persons? Thank you. I oh, know if, if they are men of God. No, you sit. You are a guest. Please sit. Any gentleman, come. Celebrate them as they come. One stand here, one stand here. Everyone, please watch. The Bible says that his divine power is so benevolent such that he put into consideration that every man on earth will need the things that pertain unto life and godliness everybody say life. life say godliness i call these people because i want to correct something up front the your life will always be lopsided if you ignore the need to capture these two dimensions in your christian experience his divine power can solve for a man the issues that pertain unto life. What are the issues that pertain unto life? The school fees of your children, your house rent, the requirement, the food that you will eat, the ability to find relevance within the context of a society, the things that pertain to life. Because the advocacy that we have received in the church for many years is that being a Christian does not allow you to experience the hand of God in the matters that pertain to life. So that the focus should be centered around the matters that pertain unto godliness. This is your character. This is the matters that pertain your salvation right making heaven and so on and so forth and that is important but here peter by the spirit is correcting us he's saying he's, he's still the same divine power that has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness that means it is not the will of god listen very carefully that you be born again a christian with a flawless character and yet not have the ability to take care of the needs of your family that when there is an imbalance in that dimension you are misrepresenting the potential of his divine power are we together now and then at the same time you can align yourself wrongly and receive the matters that pertain unto life and then ignore the matters that pertain unto godliness for instance you can be wealthy for instance you can be influential but it's not as your soul prospers remember all things prosper as your soul prospers and this is a trap of the devil he can allow every other thing to prosper at the expense of your soul if it is his divine power then all things will prosper as your soul prospers is God speaking to us now so the Bible says that his divine power it is by walking in the experience of these things verse 4 says that they validate they prove that in experience we are the partakers of his divine nature he says wherefore hath he given us this great and exceeding promises he says that by them by the evidence of the realities that concern life and godliness you will demonstrate to men that you are a partaker now not just confessing it but that it has become your reality you are an epistle of that possibility praise the lord 
please look up every one of us seated here and my dear people at the overflow those following from around the world if you look at your life sincerely you may find out that we require the divine power of God to address and stabilize us in one or both of these areas if you are here for fresh grace for ministry this is it so that you will be efficient if you are here in need of spiritual understanding this is it if you are here trusting God for miracles to solve your issues healing what kind of thing this is it here it is his divine power listen carefully his divine power everybody say his divine power Habakkuk chapter 3 hmm. from verse 3 to 4 please keep what I'm sharing is God blessing us so far yes Habakkuk chapter 3 please we'll read from verse 3 and 4 the emphasis is verse 4 God came from Taman is it possible for us to look at amplified when we get to verse 4 it says God came from Taman and the Holy One from Mount Paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise read for me verse 4 if you're a Christian he had amplified he says God he, and his brightness was like the sunlight everybody say light he says and the rays streamed from his hand and there in that light that revelation was the hiding place of his power God's power has a location that wherever his light is, that is where his power resides. So when he stretches his hands, what comes out is the power that is hidden in his word. Are we together now? His divine power. And that that power comes when we access the light from his word. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm grateful. It is very, very important. That means that the possibilities that you capture in your life is not necessarily dependent on God. I'm trying to balance this because there are so many things we are blaming God for that he does not have a hand in it. I'm establishing the fact that we should not be in limbo as to the fact that God is a benevolent God and that he seeks to watch the saints come into the fullness of what the Christ paid for. Is that correct now? When you know that this is a possibility, then you can now begin to engage the spiritual forces that will cause you to walk in the experience of this truth. But if you are still in doubt as to the fact that it is the will of God to resist this, the Bible says, if you be been evil, have you read that scripture? Know how to give what? Good gifts. There are two instances in scripture where Jesus cried one of them was at the tomb of Lazarus remember John 11 don't turn there 35 he says and Jesus wept he wept because he loved Lazarus the second reason why Jesus cried is what I want us to see in Luke chapter 19 please from verse 41 Jesus stood over a whole city and began to cry and anybody who loves Jesus should find out why he's crying. John chapter 19 and verse 41. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John chapter, I mean, did I say John? Luke chapter 19 and verse 41. I'm teaching Joss, I'm teaching my people, and I want to take my time and trust that God will grant grace to contribute that which will be required to stabilize the body. John chapter 19, or Luke, I keep saying John, forgive me. As he approached, this is Jesus now, he saw the city and wept audibly over it. Why did he weep? Verse 42, and we stop there. Exclaiming, would, would that you had known personally even at least of you in your day, the things that make for your peace. Jesus is crying over a city, looking at their situation and crying. And he's saying, um, for freedom from all the distresses and the, exp 
that are experienced as a result of sin and upon which your peace, your security, your safety, your prosperity, your happiness depends. He says, but now they are hidden from you. Let's go back to King James. Jesus is crying over a city like Joss. Imagine standing somewhere in Joss and you watch a man of God cry. And he said, why are you crying? He said, oh, Joss, Joss, Joss. That if you had known the things that had been made for your peace. This is how Jesus was crying. Do you know the danger of not experiencing the fullness of God? The human spirit was not designed to fail indefinitely. Listen to me. When you have a prolonged period of failure, chances are that you will build a theology around your failure and you will add it to the many doctrines in your life to explain away the possibility of that dimension of God. That means that if I try to prosper and I do the best that I can, I conclude subconsciously that it is not the desire of God for me to prosper. Then I will incorporate it in my theology. Remember, I'm not bad. I'm just responding to what darkness can do to a man. Are we together? Yes. So Jesus weeps over Jerusalem and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that you would know the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from you. My life and your life, listen please, the possibilities, the results that we command from our lives are not just dependent on the will of God. They are not just dependent on the predeterminate counsel of God. They are dependent on the level and the extent of light that we have, that we understand and that we engage. Are we together now? The Bible says even among the soils that produced, there was 30-fold. There was 60-fold and there were 100-fold. They were all called good soils. So the kingdom is a compendium of possibilities. And scattered all through this scripture, listen please. God's manifesto is revealed through scripture. Are we together? That means when you search the Bible like a politician telling you his antecedents, what he has done and what he will do, you can study the scripture and see the things that God did with people. Impossible situations turning around. Hebrews chapter 11 gives us the archives of those we call elders who obtain a good report. And he mentioned their situations versus their results. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. It says, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they shut the mouth of lions, women received their dead back to life. So we're not doubting the fact that God is that mighty. But I will show you where the problem is and then we begin to build on it. Are we together now? There has to be a problem. Since we have established the fact that Christ has become the door for the saints to access the fullness of God. And that God in his benevolence has declared that he seeks for the saints to come into the fullness of the life of the spirit. What then is the limitation? And this is why this convergence, this conference is very significant. Not only to our lives and families, but to the state in general. Because there is nothing we can do against the truth. But for the truth. He says, let God be true. And every man, including your situation, be a liar. Let me tell you why oppression is terrible. Oppression is not terrible because it is negative. That's the list of the reasons. Let me have someone please come up again. I hope you don't mind. I'll ask you to come up as many times. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please come up, everybody. How many of you know when you read Hebrews chapter 2 and then you also read the Psalm of David, he talks about man and his exalted position. Everybody say man. Discussing light is useless until we understand these foundations. Remember that man is the epicenter of God's creation. Do we agree? And that everything that was made was made with man in mind. To the point that the psalmist says this, what is man? That thou art mindful. I, 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 I quote it this way, what is in man? Lord, what is in man that you cannot replace him and start another species? 
man would break down and break down in decadence of sin and God will unashamedly pursue that man. So the psalmist wondered and said, there must be something in man that man does not know. To the point that he said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Men in the Bible and nations, the nation of Israel would sin and go in defiance to God's laws. They would be punished by their enemies and without them asking, God will get out of his way and it's called vulnerability and he's not ashamed of it. He will get up and reach down again. So the psalmist thought about everything. And said, Lord, what is this? If man begs you and you respond, we understand you are kind. But where man ignores you and you still chase him, what is he better than the throne room? Is he better than heaven? What is a man that you are mindful of, not the son of man that thou visitest him? The Bible says you have made him lower than the angels. The word there is Elohim. You have made him lower than God. Not necessarily in terms of negating our oneness, but that in rankness, in, in ranking of sovereignty, you have made him lower than Elohim. You have crowned him with glory and virtue. You have set him over the works of your hands. Listen carefully. So man has been set over the works of God's hands. The highest. Man is the zenith of God's creativity, his artistry, the formation of man. No other species and entity has pieced together all the components that are resident within man. Everything on earth needs man. Kill every man on earth and open every bank safe, it becomes useless. Kill every man and open every pharmacy, it becomes useless. Kill every man and open every church, everything happens because of man. So he says, what is this man? That you are mindful of. It's amazing that God is mindful of men and we are not mindful of men. Many times we talk a lot about God, which is a wonderful thing. But we forget that God minus a man will corrupt his creation. God loved men so much that Jesus became a man and went to heaven as a man. He's seated today as the man, Jesus. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Make sure you understand what I'm teaching. Are we together now? That means there must be something in this man. Now listen. How many of you know that the way Satan walks is he looks at what God is doing. That's what coordinates his interest. Whatever God is doing, Satan does not need to understand it before he begins to pursue it. The moment, because the attention of God is also where creation faces. So the moment, listen carefully. When God was making man, Adam, it caught, there were spectators in that creation. My brothers and my sisters, the garden was not just empty. The entire earth, there were beings already. I don't want to go into all of that. Please listen to me. And Satan paid attention to everything God said. Because Satan cannot come until there is the word. You are not a threat until the word makes you so. Listen, in the parable of the sower, the soils were always there, but he left them. The moment the word came, it invited him. When the word finished fasting, who was the first person he met in the wilderness? Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Please understand that this is not a man just doing an exegesis of scripture. It's God opening you up to light and illumination. Because dominion is not an impartation. There is nothing called the impartation of the grace for dominion. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. Are we together now? That the possibilities that you command in your life and my life is much more than our intentions, no matter how well-meaning you are. Listen carefully, please. So we are discussing man. Everybody say man. man. Now, the Bible says, listen carefully, 
that God set man to be the zenith of his creation. Are we still together? And something tragic happened. Watch this. Do you know Satan is not interested in man? Satan is interested in a position. It is that position that makes him to route it through man. His original intention as revealed from scripture was to run a parallel government. So you can choose God or him. I used to think his, his desire was to dethrone God. No, his desire was to run a parallel government. So you can choose either God or him. Unfortunately, listen carefully. The one thing Satan sought was what God gave man. It's called the karagma, the image. Listen carefully. It is not only Jesus that is the image of the invisible God. He was when he walked, but now in Christ, together. Remember, he's the firstborn of we the begotten. So we are also the expression of the image, the possibilities of the invisible God. Are we together now? The image of the invisible God. Man. Everybody say man. You need to understand what I'm teaching you. The expression of the image of the invisible God. So if this is true about man, it makes sense that Satan will leave every other thing. If God takes his image out of man and put it on stones, Satan will never pursue one man again. Now look at me, everybody. Since man is the highest and the zenith of God's creation, it means the loudest statement Satan can make has to be made on man. Are we together? Not plants, not animals, but men. This is the reason behind everything that happens to men. Please listen. When a man is poor, it's not about poverty and it's not about prosperity. Is Satan using that man like a, a painter will use a canvas to write a statement to God and post it through man? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Every oppression on men is a statement from Satan to God that there is still a contention of your dominion and sovereignty. And when God stretches his hand, it's a reply from God through man to Satan. So man is the epicenter and he's the object of communication between God and man. That's why whatever touches man, touches God. And you know why? It's not about the object, what went wrong. No. So if a man gets up in the morning and goes to the hospital and he's diagnosed of an incurable disease, it's not about the sickness. It's a statement from Satan through God's highest creation to God that I'm making a mockery of your sovereign power by oppressing the man that represents the zenith of who you are. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Be excited, but listen. I'm teaching you something that will change your life. Are we together now? That means it is wicked to not prosper. That means it is wicked to not be sound in health. That means it's wicked to die young. It's not only wrong. Because in... Don't be offended. I'm stretching these words to just get your attention. God is depending on man to correct the perspectives that creation has about him. Because Satan has manipulated creation in something that the Bible calls the bondage of corruption. Are we together now? The Bible says creation was subject to vanity. That something is happening in Joss that is misrepresenting the potential of God. That you look around and see people that love God with all their heart, yet their daily needs cannot be met. There is a theology that is coming out of that pain that will misrepresent God. And we will mentor our children into understanding God is not El Shaddai. Are we together now? If it is true that we have been set free from the yokes of bondages and the curses and instruments of ancestry and yet family members continue to die pattern after pattern you can see repetitions of patterns those patterns are a statement and satan attempts to tell god i am still in charge ah. 
but you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne sing you are God alone from before time began Sit down. That means a miracle is not just a proof, Pastor, that a man is anointed. A miracle is not just a proof that a church is a healthy church. A miracle is a reply from heaven that it is true when I say I'm Alpha and Omega. It is true when I say I have loved you with an everlasting love. Signs and wonders give evidence to the goodness of God. Listen. Pastors here, listen to me. Every time God begins to use you, it's more than your ministry. You are partnering with heaven to rewrite and correct something. Listen down. But there is a, there is a problem. There is a problem we have to deal with here. Was it not the woman at the well, my brothers and my sisters, who met with Jesus and now Jesus began to speak to her? Are we, are we, are we, are we, are we, are we still together? Now Jesus tells her that she has five husbands and that the sixth is not even her husband. Are we together? After that encounter by herself and on her own, it is powerful when people know your problems because they will not doubt what God does when he does it. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it says we were like them that dream. Listen, it says so said they, the hidden have to testify. So said they among the hidden that the Lord has done great things for us. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, I decree and declare that my life must change in this conference. That my life must change. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Please sit down. Let me walk this thing. Sit down. Please sit down. So all the things that the devil does in Joss is to confuse Christians. That on one side, men of God are laboring in this city to say, God, you are good. And the saints are saying, Joss belongs to you. And Satan says, I don't need to talk. I will use men as a canvas and write a statement to creation to be witnesses that God is not faithful. And let me tell you, if this is not attacked apostolically, a generation will rise from this city that will ignore God openly. They will say, we have given God time. Uh, we have watched our fathers serve God and died like chicken. We watched them serve God and could not pay the bills. We watched many of them backslide. What, what is that? Who is that God that cannot save himself? And God organized this conference to say, The man you call unfaithful is not me because I am faithful and true. Please sit down. Now, I hope you realize that I grew up in this very city. I didn't grow up in the U.S. and just visited this city. So I'm, I'm familiar with both the mindset and the extent of decadence and pain that God's precious people have gone through. The average believer, I'm teaching apostolically. I'm only talking to a church, but I'm speaking to the city. Listen carefully. Please listen. God put this conference because it is time for this city to be a revelation of the multifaceted dimensions that are resident within the Christ. Hallelujah. Let me say this arguably but truthfully. I do not know any city in this nation 
and with all humility there are few places in this nation I have not been I have not seen any city that is sincere passionate and truly moral like just it's true it may sound like I'm being biased but it's the truth it is in this city that you can see a woman old enough to be your grandmother and she will greet you and not be afraid Yet their lives continue to show that God is not a good God. We, we quote scriptures. That's why people don't read their Bibles. Because when they read their Bibles, they get angry. I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. And here is a pastor who has labored with all his heart begging for bread. The children join him begging for bread. Remember, it's not about money. Remember, it's not about healing. Nothing we talk about is really about the object of discussion. It's what it can be used to do. Are we together now? There's a lot of pain in this city. There's a lot of frustration. And the people who call upon the name of the Lord. I'm glad that there are so many pastors here. And I know that they will be truthful to tell you as a man of God it is painful to watch yourself dispense the word of God day and night. And the people you so labor for will not confirm. They will ask you questions one day you cannot answer. So the obvious answer is that you do not have faith. But it may not be the most accurate answer. Is the most sincere answer from a frustrated man of God. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those that were at the shadow of death. Listen please. Let's go to Psalm 82 and verse 5. And I will show you we're beginning to establish what the situation is and to trust God. Please listen. Listen. I am human and don't mistake in what I'm communicating. I, I don't mean to agitate you or insult your intelligence. Are we together now? Yes. I come as one who is part of this pain. I don't come as one isolated from it and coming to insult the intelligence of a city. No, I love the body. So you must understand that my communication is from a standpoint of pain. I share the burden of the spirit, not only for the nations, but for this city. Psalm 82 and verse 5. Joss, I know that there are mighty men and women of God in this city, the pastor of your church being one and chief among them. I know that there are many great people seated here, custodians of wisdom and revelation. I agree. I know that there are men and women who have spanned their theological knowledge from border to border. I agree. I also agree that there are all kinds of platforms for learning here in this city. I know that this is a city that is a headquarters of many churches around the north. I agree. But let me tell you this. The Bible says, they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men there is something that when you do not know it makes you a mere man but you will die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So we're identifying where the problem is. Please listen. No matter how you convince yourself, the problem is that they know not. You see why I spoke about meekness before I started? Because when you open, listen, when you are before God, many things about what he's saying may be uncomfortable. But my brothers and my sisters, if you allow the spirit of God through meekness to penetrate your heart you will marvel and wonder at the dimensions you begin to operate in like i said this conference for me is a family affair pastor this is really a family affair now that doesn't mean if you are not in this state or you're connecting from any part of the world 
permit and please forgive my bias but it's true salvation was first of the Jews Jesus said do not go anywhere but to the lost tribe of Israel I believe that if a man blesses the world and fails to bless the territory from which he came he failed the territory must also experience the hand of God they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of place remember we agreed that apostle john told us that this is the record that god has given us the way eternal life as we call it he says this life is resident within the sun so that whoever has the sun has that life we all agree that we have the sun but the fullness of that life is not being expressed in us. Ephesians chapter 4, please, and verse 18. I hope you don't mind standing still. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. We'll find somewhere and then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 4. Please read with me if you're a child of God. Ready? One to read. Having their understanding darkened. Uh-huh. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them stop stop just keep looking having their understanding darkened there we see darkness again and then he says the reality of that darkness alienates them from the experience the potential that comes with the zoe life so whilst it is true that i have received jesus christ whilst it is true that potentially everything in christ should be made manifest in my life while it is true that God has not withheld anything. The Bible says because our understandings are darkened. And then he says that we have been alienated through ignorance from the potential that is in the life of God. Listen, I hope I, hope I can talk. Is, will, that, will you be fine with that? Listen, if I die today of sickness, you will cry and you will say oh this man of god died of sickness and i understand but my condition is too small a reference to suddenly change the reality that the power of god can keep people whole and healed we must to approach this thing we must isolate our individual experiences and put our eyes on jesus then we can receive that which it takes to liberate us that means my testimony for or against the performance of God in my life should be too small a reason to judge him unfaithful. Hmm. Think very carefully of what I'm saying. If my children become wayward and they don't love the Lord, that does not mean there is no provision in the power of God to raise disciplined children. Now, this is an uncomfortable truth, but it is true. Until we are ready to confront the truth for what it is. Remember, we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. This is what changed my life. Acts chapter 18. Megin ma, 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 Babu, Babu, Wanita ma. Acts chapter 18 from verse 24 the Bible is about to show us something please look up I want to show us where the problem is I listen I am, I cry every day. I thank God for all you know about Apostle Selman. But let me tell you, I am, my prayer to God every day is, Lord, expose my area of ignorance. I want to know what I do not yet know. Thank God for the things I know. But if I knew better, I would not be where I am now. 
So Lord, thank God for the accolades of men, but my heart is open because compared to the standard you have set, we are only a step out of the cave. Whoever can maintain that posture is the one who will be greatly used as a battle axe in this end time. God loves everybody, but he does not trust everybody. There is a position of continued hunger that must propel you to know more. Please keep that scripture. And a certain Jew named Apollos. Now, I want us to look very carefully at the qualification of this great man. And tell me, pastors, if you will not ordain this man to be a pastor in your church. Ready? The Bible says, number one, an eloquent man. Eloquence is not a gift. The Bible says he was mighty in scripture. Number two, take note. Number three, that he came to Ephesus. We're reading to 28. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. So he was not a rebel. He was under mentorship. Someone mentored him. Are we together now? He was under the tutelage and the mentorship of someone. The Bible says he was fervent in spirit. So this was not a lukewarm brother. Look at the qualifications. Then the Bible says he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. So he was a preacher too. But, read the last expression. Knowing only. Stop, stop, stop. Don't rush. Knowing only. Hmm. Eloquent. Fervent. Powerful. An evangelist. Mighty. But knowing only. Knowing, I love God, I serve God, but the person who mentored me, taught me only. And so the part that he taught became my vista into seeing everything about God. I look at God from the bias of my mentorship. I look at God from the limitation of my tutelage. Everybody is a product of a system that has constructed your understanding. Listen to me. We are dealing with these issues now. Light. I hope you know that Ephesus was not a place where you just come as a preacher and talk jargons. There was a goddess there called Diana. Ephesus was a place of spiritual intelligence. Theologically speaking, it's believed that Ephesus was the place where Paul demonstrated the zenith of his apostleship. When you read the construction of the six chapters of Ephesians, he teaches the complete balanced work of a believer. Your work seated in Christ, are we together? Your character working worthy of your call and your standing against the wiles of the devil. All captured in Ephesians. And here we have a man knowing I came for a conference like this and while he was teaching there were two strange people called Aquila and Priscilla they were in that meeting now I like them most of you will insult him because you know but they discern the potentials and they also discern his limitation the Bible says they allowed the service to finish when they heard the Bible says they took him that's why I asked the gentleman to wait for me they took the man of God, eloquent, fervent in spirit, an orator, a preacher who came for a conference called Joshua Selman. When he finished, they held his hand and said, you have done well, but come. And the Bible says they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Hold on. So the perfection was not the eloquence. The perfection was not the fervency in spirit. The perfection was not even the submission to authority. The, per the perfection was the accuracy of the understanding and the dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom. Please, are you following me now? The conference is called Light. 
Imagine what happened. I salute the real hero in these stories, Apollos. Because there is something called the pride of life. Let me explain to you. The pride of life is not the same thing as pride. The pride of life is the obvious satisfaction and vainglory derived from obvious results. If you don't have results, you can't have the pride of life. You can have pride, but not the pride of life. So this man was qualified to look at Aquila and Priscilla and say, be careful. If you were good enough, you would have been the one preaching at this conference. Please let me advocate my precious people of God and that includes the dear servants of God in this city. Let's remain students in the school of the spirit. It's not a position that is comfortable for humans. This is why we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to remain so. At the zenith of Paul's apostolic exploits, he cried again and said that I may know him. Know what again about him, Paul? I thought you saw him. That I may know him. Two thirds of the New Testament that I may know him. Is God helping us tonight? We'll find somewhere and pray shortly. So God is a benevolent God. And we have seen that everything that shortchanges our potentials is a statement from man or through man from Satan to God. And now we have established the fact that the problem is darkness. Are we together? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.